They live in my basement, but it's a cute basement. It's not like a gross one. They're probably already awake. Good morning! Good morning! Don't mind their poop. I'll clean it. Good morning! Kitty Doe, Pina, Jinxie, oh, Jinxie, and Nar. Hi, handsome boy. Hi, handsome. All right, so the first thing that I do, well, this is where I usually put them. Sometimes they'll just jump out on their own, but I just like to put them in there. Although they might just come out on their own. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll put their little ladder sometimes. But sometimes I'll be fine. You can go first if you want. You want me to pick you up? Come here. Nope. You want to go? <laughs> Come here, handsome. Oh. And then I'll just put them in their little bed. But right now they're like, they're ready to go. Hi, handsome. So this is where they stay. Do not mind that thing right there, that poster. My brother also hangs out down here. This is not mine. This is mine. This is from when we were like little kids. Um, okay, so they have all their stuff. These are just their little toys, their bed. Hello, beautiful. Yeah, I know. They always hide their treats in here, but Nar likes this. Um, their little tube. These are, it's kind of messy, but these are their dry, I mean dry. These are their clean, um, like bedding, whatever. All their stuff here. Don't mind their poop bags. This is where I keep their small. These are like wee pads that I've cut up or like ones that I cut from dirty ones. So I can put them in corners and these are their new ones. I put one in here because they love to poop in there. I put one here. I put one there, I put one there. <laughs> They're in like every single corner because they poop so much. Right, you poop so much. Yeah, I know. Okay, so these are their treats, which I'll explain. The, they don't usually get these a lot because these are not good for them, but they got these for Christmas. And so I give them once, maybe like, I don't even know, once every few weeks, because these are not good. These, I'll explain these more, I guess, later, but these are the ones that I give them as treats typically because they're, it's just freeze-dried chicken and they're carnivores, obviously, so they should really only have meat, but I can't get them to eat raw anything, so I'll show what I do with this later too, but sometimes I'll give them, like, raw, um, like, eggs and stuff, but what? See, now they think, don't mind my slippers, now they think they're getting a treat, so now they're staring at me. Well, I'll give you one in a second, okay? Hold on. Um, yeah, so, and then I get their, I get the quail one, which they also like. It's just better than giving, like, store-bought treats, because it's, it's just, it's freeze, it's like, it's one ingredient, it's freeze-dried quail. Uh, and then sometimes I'll give them, the only one that likes this is, is Kitty Doe and Jinx, but it's just cat food, which is also, like, meat. Um, what else do I have here? You'll see what I use this for in a minute. This is just their water, I'll just, I'll just... I'll show everything in a second. This is, oh, I guess I shouldn't show you that. This is Nars. He had a little weenie problem, but yeah, this is hard to film like this. I'm gonna give them their quail because they're so sport. Here, here. Here, See, and the other boys, like, there's, that's Nar, and that's Kirito. They'll usually go for, like, somebody else's that I gave them. Nar's actually pretty good. I don't really know why he went and took Jinx's, but Kirito just, like, has mine of his own. And he likes treats that have been chewed up already for him. Nar, Nar. Nar, Nar. Handsome boy. Now I'll show you the fun part of cleaning the I'm not going to record this whole part. I'll just show you pretty much what I do, because you probably don't like looking at poop for this long. But I just grab the clump of poop that's in here i put it on this then i can't record myself doing this because i'm gonna move it over here so you don't have to keep looking at the poop um because i only have two hands but this clean part right here i'll cut with the scissors and then i'll put it 
in this box over here and then I'll use it for like corners like that. And like little, cause sometimes they'll poop over here. So I'll cut it and I'll put like little things over there too. I replaced it with a new one. Now I'll just clean this part. This is easy. Excuse me. Hi. I'll usually just put their food back in here. <laughs> clean up like the crumbs and stuff this is um the food that they get i don't know how to i could try to insert a picture but i don't know how to do that because i don't i'm not really good with like this kind of stuff but they get i, pro I can put it in like a text thing they get Y song it's the same brand as as their quilt it's the ferret archetype oh no it's ferret it's ferret epigen 90 but digestive support because that one is apparently better for them but it's always important to have make sure that like almost well all if you can feed them raw that's great but mine don't like it you could feed them <laughs> you could feed them with all the ingredients being meat if you possibly can but the bet the closest to make sure at least the first five ingredients are meat some fillers could be other stuff but i mean you really shouldn't you if you could get them to eat all meat that's the best diet for them i feed them but they're so picky like he this boy right here sometimes will eat he'll eat a raw egg he'll eat like the the wet cat food but most of them are just so picky so i have to give them the best the best kibble that you can give them at least which i know is the Y song ferret epigen 90 digestive support food there's a few other ones but don't feed them marshals that's what they give you if i mean typically anywhere you get them even if you adopt them they're typically because it's the cheapest food it's the most like accessible but it is not good don't feed marshals it's bad i promise this is pina i also give them like a little bit of dry fruit in here too um and then i'll replace this this is just to keep their water or like this area clean because they always most she's good with it but they typically dig in the water and they just splash it out everywhere so if this is dry i'll just like put it again uh if it's not dry i'll just get a dry one and then i'll put it there so i just clean the bottom now typically i'll replace uh these ones depending because like sometimes i like to dig under here but they don't they never poop down here it's just i just put it there for i don't know added comfort in case they make like a mess in case sometimes uh i'll put their i'll show up i make them soup I'll show you that in a second. I put their soup in here, and sometimes I spill it, so I just put that stuff down there because it's just easier. Hello, Peenty Weenty. Hello, Peenty Weenty. You know, actually, I'm going to introduce all of them. This is my firstborn little baby boy. I'm just kidding. I don't... Uh, I guess he might be firstborn, actually. I don't know. He is four years old. His birthday is March 22nd, 2015. Wow, he's such an old man. Nah, he's not that old. So this is Jinxie. And she's so hyper. She never wants to sit still. Her birthday is also March 22nd, 2015. The guy at Petco said that they're litter mates, but I mean, I don't, do we think that they are? I don't know. Look at her. And then look at him. I mean, I guess it's possible just because, like, you know, you know how genetics work. And one of the parents could have looked like Jinxie. One could have looked like Narnar. I don't know. It's possible. Then we have the big boy, Kitty Dog. We got him. Uh, no, we got him maybe, I don't even know, maybe like six months after because I saw him at Petco. I swear, once you get... Once, the things that people say, like, once you get a ferret, um, you, like, can't stop getting them. It's true. And I was like, oh, I want, I want, I want the, the other one that, he's hyper right now. I want the other one that looks just like Narnar. He's three years old. His birthday's, oh, oh my gosh, he's four. He's actually four years old. Wow. Oh, I hate that they're getting so old. My little boy, Kirito, his birthday is July 1st, 2015. Everybody's getting so old. Oh, you're so tired. You're sleepy. This is Pina. She's the baby. She's so cute. I can't believe how fast, like, time goes by with them. She always also licks my face like this because she loves me. 
my little peeny weenie's birthday is july 15th 2016 i think this is the kind of stuff that they do all the time <laughs> they'll be playing and like uh, now they stopped and one of them will be digging in the other one's back What are we doing? This is what they do. They always play on the top of the stairs. They love to run up here. See, she's always the instigator. She always wants to fight with them. And this is Pina's, her favorite thing. She loves water bottles so much. Actually, let me get you a flat one. She, watch, she'll grab, she'll grab this one and she'll drag it somewhere. Her new place is over in that corner. Let's see where she takes it, if I'm right. Oh, see, told you. <laughs> but see, now Jinx caught her. And oh, there she goes, see, do you see her? I told you. She, and then she'll just put it there and then I'll just put, oh, he's so fat. Um, yeah, then I'll just I'll just grab it and I'll put it back in here because they love to play with it. They love them. Right now, right now, right handsome boy. Yeah, Jinx is so hyper right now. Oh, Pina. I don't know where she's going. I I hate this thing, this poster so much. Just ignore it every time you see it because it's not mine. I do not listen to any of that music. It's not mine. And this is what they'll do. Like, Pina, if she's tired, she'll just go right back in here. You're sleepy, right? You're sleepy, right? You're sleepy. And this is exactly like what I said before why I put this in here because Jinx likes to dig and make a mess and and get water everywhere, but that's okay. All right, stop, that's enough. <laughs> and then she gets soaking wet. But I'm gonna show you how I make their soup in a second. All right, that's enough. What are you doing? She is not ever allowed to meet the ferrets because she'll eat them. Yes, she will eat them, because you're so bad. No, I'm just kidding, she's really good, but she's just really bad with like small, Small animals, small dogs, stuff like that. But she's so friendly. She lets you do anything to her. She just is... She doesn't know how big she is. She doesn't know her size. And she will hurt something a lot smaller than her. By accident. It's just an accident, I know. You're misunderstood. So this is how I make their soup. First, I just... I didn't take a video of me cracking the egg, obviously. But this is... I put an egg in first, then I put hot water in, and then I'll show you the rest downstairs. So the way that I make their soup is I put one egg, I put some warm water, and then I'll put this stuff in it. And then the quail one, and I'll just mix it, but I can't record that, so I'll just show it after. They always know when they're about to get this. Look. <laughs> you guys want soupy soupy? You want soupy soupy? Watch out, watch out, watch out. Excuse me. They love this stuff. I don't know if you can hear their cute little slurpings. I love how they have their winter coats now too. Pina's usually so little, but look at this. She's so fluffy. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. She's so fluffy. And the boys are so fluffy. Jinxies isn't really fully in yet. I'm sorry. Pina is usually the first one to tap out of the eating first. This is typically what they do. I'll leave them down here. Hi, handsome boy. They'll put themselves to sleep. Right, Pansy Wings? And Jinxie. Because if I'm home, I have to go to work soon, but. So I'm gonna put them back and shut the doors. But if I'm home, like if I'm upstairs, just eating, getting dressed, doing anything really, if I'm home, I'll leave I'll leave them down here with these doors open and then they'll just play with each other 
and then they'll eventually go back in on their own. But if I'm going somewhere and, and overnight, I'll shut, I'll shut the doors and make sure that they're in here just because I know a lot of people have free roam ferrets, but I don't know. It scares me personally because God forbid, like they get stuck on something, they get hurt in here. I'm not down here and that would just be devastating. So as long as I'm home, I'll leave the, I'll leave it open. I'll just let them free roam. But yeah, if I go somewhere or if I'm gone for like a long period of time, I will definitely make sure to close the cage. Right, handsome boy? If anyone wants to hear a quick story about this little boy, Narnar, he, <sighs> he ate an earplug. I think it was about a year ago. He ate an earplug and man, it was the scariest moment of my life, probably. I love him so much and it was just traumatizing. He was totally fine, but so little backstory i i'm a dog walker so and sometimes i I'll, I'll like stay at people's houses overnight and these specific dogs that i do i was staying at their house for six nights in a row and so i had them i kept them at my boyfriend at the time's house and so right before i left there nar was throwing up which is not normal for ferrets but occasionally if they eat too fast they'll like they'll start to like vomit a little bit no, well, I shouldn't phrase it like that. It's not normal, but sometimes if these guys, it's it's not common. They don't do it a lot at all, but I've talked to my vet about it. She said it's the same with, with um, like cats and stuff. If they eat really fast, they'll vomit. So right before I left, like I dropped him off there, he was eating and so then he vomited. So I was like, okay, he's just probably eating really fast. Then he told me that he did it like a few more times so I started to get panicky but I didn't think I was gonna take him to the vet after I finished dog sitting because I thought he was fine I thought he was just eating it could have been anything all right they decided to go to sleep so I'm just gonna quickly finish telling the story on my own if anyone even cares about hearing it but basically he his like little weenie was like there was crusty stuff on it and he was kind of struggling to pee so that made me think that he had like an obstruction or something in his intestines so i was freaking out it was a snowstorm too uh when like the last day when i came home when this happened so i was panicking i was freaking out. i was like we have to it was it was bad there was like it was a real snowstorm there was like hail snow it was bad but the emergency vet was open so i was like we have to take him i was a wreck at this point i was bawling my eyes out i was crying because I just love Nar so much. And so, yeah, I was I was a, I was a mess. So, we went to the emergency vet and um they they took x-rays on him and they she said she couldn't see anything. So, I was just freaking out. I was like, I don't know what's wrong with him. So, she's like, we could uh we could do I forget what she did. She's like we could use there's like this stuff that they can swallow and it makes it glow in the x-rays. I forget what it's called. I learned it like at school, but I don't remember. So, um, she's like, or, but she, but she was like palpating it. She felt it. And she was like, I'm pretty sure that there's something in there. Like it almost feels like rubber. And I was like, at that point I was like, great. Cause he, Nar loves rubber and he, he loves to chew on things that are rubber. So I was like, I was like, it was probably, I know he needed an earplug. Cause like, I just, he used to chew on them. Like, don't ask me why I had them, but um, yeah, so I was like, I know that's what it is. I was just bawling my eyes out. She was like, well, we could, we could do the surgery anyway, but, and then this, this lady, bless this lady. I love her. And so she, or this vet, this doctor, I should say, she told us this was probably at like 2 AM at this point. Uh, maybe it was like midnight actually. And she said, that she was supposed to leave. Oh no, it was probably like 2 a.m. She, she, uh, maybe it doesn't matter really, but maybe it was, it was, it was really close to when she was about to leave. Maybe it was like 1 45 and she had to leave at two. And cause she was going on vacation the next morning and she had a flight at 6 a.m. She told me, and she was like, so I could do this emergency surgery for you like tonight, or you could wait and take him somewhere in the morning but I wouldn't wait because he might not make it 24 hours, 24 hours or he could die. So I was, when I tell you that I have not cried this much in my life, I'm not exaggerating. I was 
bawling my eyes out. I was a wreck. I was like, can you please, please just do the surgery? And she was like, yeah, of course. Like, it's my job. I'm just, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, your other options. And she was so sweet about it. She was so nice. I wish I remembered her name. She works, uh, I'm not gonna tell you where she works, but she was, she was so nice. Dr. Oh, I forget her name, but she was an angel sent from heaven above. She really seriously was. I was a wreck. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry to make you stay. And she's like, don't worry about it. It's my job. But, oh my goodness. So he got surgery and she called us about like three in the morning maybe and said that everything was good. It was an earplug, which I knew it would be. And thank God she, she said that they didn't have to cut him open. Like they didn't have to rupture his intestines or anything, or it didn't rupture his intestines. They didn't need to cut his intestines. She was able to just kind of like push it, like, like, like very lightly push on his intestines and kind of like push it out of his system. Thank God. Because ferrets, it's, they're not, if they get surgery, it's, it's harder for them to recover. And cause they're so little, I mean, they go under anesthesia. Like it's not, it's not like a common thing. And a lot of times like it's hard, like they don't make it. So I seriously thank God. Like I, it was horrible. I felt so horrible. He, but he was, he recovered great. I mean, he's, he's a, he's a trooper. He gets access to nothing rubber, no earplugs. And yeah, so that's my story. We hope you liked our video. Thank you. Bye.